Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and blessed Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Our text is Matthew 22, 15 through 22. To read along, pause the video, get out your Bible, look up Matthew 22:15, and push play when you're ready to continue. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A young lady was soaking up the sun's rays on a California beach when a little boy in his swimming trunks carrying a towel came up to her and asked her, Do you believe in God? She was surprised by the question, but she replied, Why, yes, I do. Then he asked her, do you go to church every Sunday? Again, her answer was yes. He then asked, Do you read your Bible and pray every day? Again, she said yes. But now her curiosity was very much aroused. The little boy sighed with relief and said, Will you hold my quarter while I go in swimming? That little boy was very wise. He could have asked her many other questions before trusting her to hold his quarter, but answers to those three questions were all he needed to know. Would you have thought of them? The Pharisees in our text, on the other hand, were not so wise as Jesus. They sent some followers to ask a question that they thought would get the best of Jesus. The little boy wanted to know if he could trust the young lady to hold his quarter. The Pharisees, says Matthew, sought an answer from Jesus that would either alienate his adoring crowds or get him into trouble with the Roman authorities. But Jesus saw what they were up to and responded brilliantly. Show me the coin for the tax, Jesus said. So they brought him a denarius. Then Jesus asked, Whose likeness is this? As though he didn't know. Caesar's, they answered. Then Jesus responded, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, we are told, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This statement by Jesus is very well known, both among people who love Jesus and among those who don't. Being in the first camp, I celebrate what Jesus says here, and I try to live my life accordingly. What does that mean? Well, to me, it first means recognizing that there is a difference between the things that are God's and the things that are Caesar's. Second, that material things are not as important as spiritual things. Following Jesus, asking what Jesus would do, and then doing it, is of much greater consequence than following the crowd, or even following the law. For instance, following the law does not necessarily mean you are a good person. It may just mean that you're smart enough to stay out of trouble. You might not be a good person at all, rather simply a person who wants to avoid discomfort. Someone has said that the true test of a person is to watch what they do when they think nobody's looking. That definition begins to get at the difference between obeying Caesar 
and obeying God. But it's not the only one. A more important difference is the difference between morality and practicality, though sometimes they converge. A few nights ago at about 8.30 p.m., four students from Pepperdine were standing along Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu. A person driving way over the speed limit lost control of his car and ran into them, killing all four. His failure to render to Caesar obedience to the law led to a failure to render to God obedience to the moral law, as he killed four young ladies and injured two more. This afternoon, I was at a restaurant on Pico when two cars flew by, driving loudly over the speed limit. A few minutes later, as they loudly drove by again, going at least as fast as the first time, they were failing to render to Caesar obedience to the traffic laws. As far as I know, though, their disobedience to Caesar did not lead to anything worse that time. Thank God. As I think about this text as part of the series of gospel texts from Matthew that we've been reading this fall, I can't help feeling sorry, in a way, for the Jewish leaders who kept opposing Jesus in one way or another, until they finally got him crucified. We have enough evidence that Jesus knew what he was doing, and they did not. We have Jesus' own words to that effect. On September 3rd, in fact, we read one place where those words are given to us, Matthew 16, where Jesus tells his disciples precisely what was going to be done to him. I quote, he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. In fact, they were dupes. You might call them useful idiots who did to Jesus precisely what he had become a human being to do. Does that fact excuse what they did? Not at all. Rather, it illustrates the danger of opposing Caesar or God and the likelihood of suffering the consequences of such foolish behavior, whichever sort of disobedience it is. Disobeying traffic laws can have terrible results, even if we don't see a police car's lights in our rearview mirror. Failure to pay taxes even if unplanned, can lead to a significant penalty when discovered. But here is today's final reason to render to Caesar and to God what belongs to them. We as Christians are dual citizens, both of the nation in which we live and of God's kingdom. As such, we not only owe obedience to both our nation and God, but we also owe our fellow citizens of both to be good examples to others. We sometimes hear people say they don't go to church because they don't get anything there. But getting something is not the only reason for attending church. We also attend in order to give. What do we give? Why, encouragement, friendship, support, even love. We don't just go to church for ourselves. We go for others as well. In the same manner, we render to Caesar the effort to be good citizens, even to the point of speaking and working for changes in rules or practices that we prefer. And we render to God the membership we have in a congregation and our participation in it, making decisions to better serve the community and also to proclaim the gospel. So while our civil citizenship and our spiritual citizenship differ, we are wise to follow Jesus' advice, to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. In so doing, we will be better persons and better representatives of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Good works do not save us, but they do when we explain why we do them, show others our faith in Jesus. Amen.